Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. Today I'm so excited to participate in the 25 Days of Christmas card series where I'm collaborating with Courtney Krieber. This is day 19 and we're each going to share a tropical themed holiday card with you today. I purchased the Flippin' Fabulous stamp set and stencil and the Sandy Shores background stamp from Honey Bee Stamps earlier this year and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. I also had this Penguin Tropical Christmas stamp set from Joy Claire Designs that has a stamp that says holidays are better in flip-flops and I thought that I could put these two together and make a beach scene card. Since I haven't made very many slimline cards yet, I decided to make this tropical scene on a vertical slimline card base. I started with a sheet of Simon Hurley's stark white cardstock that I cut down to 3.5 by 8.5 to create my panel. Now I measured the height of the flip-flops and I cut a piece of masking paper to be slightly larger so that my flip-flops would be on the sand and then I set this piece aside. I cut a rectangle piece for the water to separate the sand and the sky and then I'm, that's what I've added there in the middle. So starting with the sand, I'm using antique paper, Distress Oxide ink, and then I'm applying it pretty thick starting from the bottom working my way up. So if you've watched my other videos, you may already know this about me, but I don't normally plan ahead when making my cards. Sometimes I have an idea and then I start creating and then it ends up being something totally different than what I had planned. Or things happen and I have to adjust and work around them. And by things, I mean mistakes. And that's exactly what happened with this card, but I'll show you what I mean here shortly. Now toward the top, I've added tea dye just a little bit so that it's darker like where the water hits the sand and I'm using my favorite ink blending tool which is the domed foam applicators from scrapbook.com now I'm using the sandy shores background stamp and I'm inking this up with vintage photo distress ink now I've sped this process up quite a bit but I'm laying the panel here on top and I'm making sure that I've applied enough pressure all over next I'm working on the sky starting with broken china but after I applied it, I realized it wasn't quite dark enough for the sunset sky look that I was going for. I applied some dusty concord on the corners, and now I'm applying abandoned coral to, for that outer sun shade, and then ripe persimmon right below it. And I plan on putting mustard seed for the actual sun. But here you can see that I'm just going over what I already did with blueprint sketch just to make it darker because I felt like that sky was too blue for it to be sunset. And again, I'm using the dusty Concord to kind of blend the blueprint sketch in with the abandoned coral. So now I'm just taking my heat gun to help this dry a little bit. And now I'm removing the masking paper. And this is one of the things that I was mentioning earlier. Um, for some reason, this masking paper is super sticky and it's tearing my cardstock. Um, so this is something that I've had to uh, work with. I didn't want to have to start over because I thought the sky turned out pretty and the sand looks really good. So um, I'll have to show you how I fix that here shortly. But I'm using that same piece of masking paper to mask off the sky. And I'm putting down that measured piece on the bottom and starting with the water. So for the water, I started out with Salty Ocean and then I'm adding in some Mermaid Lagoon, I believe. Yes, Mermaid Lagoon. And then I'm blending in a little bit of Blueprint Sketch toward the very top where the horizon line is. So after removing that masking paper at the top, I noticed that there's a little tiny white line toward the right. And as you can see here, I'm having difficulty getting this masking paper off of my sand and it's sticking and tearing um, but I figured I'd be covering that up with the flip-flops anyway so I proceeded on I had planned on putting some shimmery um, what is this shimmer powder and instead of spraying it on I am applying it with a stencil brush so that it looks like the waves crashing and now I'm just painting on some waves onto the water using my paintbrush and you saw me there with the scissors. I was trying to cut off this little flap of where the masking paper tore the, on the left-hand side, um, but I end up trimming this down anyway. So here I'm just adding more waves, trying to make it look realistic. 
And because that white line was really bugging me up in the top right hand corner, I had this stamp and I'm not really sure where this came from. I got a, a bunch of stamps at a yard sale and it looked like a little island. I think it's actually water, but I'm using it to create this little island just to cover up that white spot. And then I um, found these little palm trees in another stamp set. So I thought that that kind of worked out perfect to make this little sunset, <laughs> fixing my little mistake. Okay, so that same stamp set that I used to create the island, there was also some shimmering water. So I have stamped that on using some Versamark ink and added some holographic embossing powder to it. It's different colors and it, d depending on the light and what's behind it, it changes colors and it looks really cool. Here I'm just brushing off any excess that's kind of sticking everywhere because I forgot to use my embossing powder buddy thing. Anti-static tool, that's what it's called. Um, so I'm letting my heat gun heat up for about 30 seconds and then I'll be applying this and I've sped this process up so that the video won't be too long. So even though there's a couple of blemishes on my background, I thought it was really pretty, but I needed to make it Christmassy looking. So I decided to use some of Catherine Pooler Designs um, Christmassy paper, and this is her under the tree slimline paper pad. I am using this to stamp out my flip flops. I'm using my stamping platform, and I am just using the Ranger Archival ink in jet black and I'm applying this several times and making sure that I have a really good impression. In order for me to use the same piece of paper as my frame, I needed to make sure that I didn't cut the edges. So I've used my paper piercer to poke a hole so that I could fit my scissors in the middle. So now I'm just fussy cutting out the flip flops very carefully and then I'll be applying these to a scrap sheet of cardstock using some removable tape so that I can add the stencil on top and apply the Nouveau Glimmer Paste. And I believe the color is Esmeralda Green. Um, haven't used this before, but um, I'm just taking the Glimmer Paste and applying this using my palette knife and I don't want to waste anything so here you see me scraping it off the foam piece and um, I really wasn't sure what to expect because I've never used this before I was hoping that you wouldn't be able to see the red and white through it and it ended up looking really cool it, it was pretty thick um, so I did this to both flip-flops So back to my background, in order for me to fix the little tear that was in the water from that masking paper, I decided to trim it down using a slimline die. This is the Cat Scrappiness Scallop Slimline Die Set, and this is the largest one. And so by doing that, it actually worked out perfect. The, you can't even see the tear now, and it shows more of the frame. So now I am using the sentiment that says holidays are better in flip-flops from that Joy Claire stamp set. And because it's new, you'll notice here that when I stick it in my platform, it kind of sticks a little bit. So what I like to do is kind of put my fingers on top of it just to make it less sticky, I guess. And I'm applying my anti-static powder tool. This time I remembered it and I'm using that same Ranger Archival ink, but this time I'm gonna be coating it with some clear embossing powder just to make it stand out a little more. Um, what's great about the Ranger embossing, not, I'm sorry, Ranger ink is that it stays wet so that you can use it to emboss with. What I like about using the stamping platform is that I can go over the stamp twice now, even though I may get a good impression the first time around, anytime I'm embossing, I, I want to make sure that I have plenty of ink on there. And I always have to make sure that I do this quickly so that it doesn't dry. So again, I let my heat gun heat up for about 30 seconds and um, making sure that I do both sides so it doesn't warp my cardstock. 
Now I am trimming down my card base. This is a sheet of Simon Hurley Stark White card stock. This is 110 pounds, so I like to use this as my card base as well. And I've just cut it down to, um, on the 10 inch or 11 inch side, I've cut it down to seven inches. And now I'm just scoring it right down the middle at three and a half. So now to assemble the card, I'm using some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive Liquid Glue. And I really like this glue because it allows me to scoot the pieces where I want them, but it does dry quickly. I'm using that same piece of paper that I cut the flip-flops out of as my frame. Now I didn't cut this smaller, I made it the exact same size as my card base. I didn't really want the white to show. and. Um, you really can't tell because this cardstock is so thick you won't be able to tell that that piece was cut out normally i like to use like some foam tape or some foam squares to kind of pop things up make them three-dimensional but i thought i would just glue these directly onto the background because i want to send this to my sister in utah she always has a white Christmas and I live in Florida, so I don't ever get to see snow. And so I thought this would be perfect for me to send to her. I wanted to make sure that I could keep this as flat as possible so that it wouldn't get messed up in the mail. So now to add these little Holly embellishment stickers, I could not believe that I had this in my stash. I knew I had something Christmassy and these just worked perfect for these flip-flops. I was so excited and I love how this turned out. I really hope you like this card. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Now because this is a collaboration video, you'll find the link to Courtney's video in the description box below, along with a list of all of the supplies that I used to make this card today. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Cards by Kendra. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.